create a spirit who descended into Jerusalem to renew the earth, strongly shaking that upper room and filling the apostles with your sacred terror. And by making them humble and fearful, you also made them capable of becoming your saints. Shake, we ask you, these hearts of ours which are so insensitive to our error. Pierce it with that final filial fear, which is the principle of spiritual wisdom, so that the very prospect of sin horrifies us totally. Amen.
A reading from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 3. Now a certain man, a Pharisee named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council, came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus replied, I tell you the solemn truth, unless a person is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter his mother's womb and be born a second time, can he? Jesus answered, I tell you the solemn truth, unless a person is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows wherever it will, and you hear the sound it makes. But you do not know where it comes from and where it is going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus replied, How could these things be? Jesus answered, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you don't understand these things? I will tell you the solemn truth. We speak what we know and we testify about what we have seen. But you people do not accept our testimony. If I have told you people about earthly things and you don't believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For this is the way God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world should be saved through him. The one who believes in him is not condemned. The one who does not believe has been condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the one and only Son of God. Now this is the basis for judging, that the light has come into the world and the people love the darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil deeds hates the light and does not come to the light, so that their deeds will not be exposed. But the one who practices the truth comes to the light so that it may plainly be evident that his deeds have been done in God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we read the account of a meeting between Jesus and one Nicodemus, who was not only a Pharisee, but also a member of the Temple Council. He was, therefore, someone with a great knowledge of the Scriptures. He had heard the teachings of Jesus and wanted to hear more, but in secret, for he did not want his colleagues to know that he was meeting with this Jesus of Nazareth. Nicodemus acknowledged that Jesus was a teacher who had come from God, recognising that it would not be possible for him to do the things he was doing unless he had the authority of God to do so. Accepting this, he wanted a private meeting with Jesus to find out more. Jesus immediately gave him a great secret. It is not possible to either see or enter the kingdom of God unless you are reborn in water and spirit. Even to this open-minded Pharisee, these words came as a bit of a shock, for he could not grasp what it was that Jesus meant. He thought that the key to the kingdom of God, like his colleagues, lay in knowledge of the law, for that was the way that they were brought and taught, had been taught and brought up. Knowledge is useful and interesting, 
but it does not provide access to God, for this has to come from the heart and through the workings of the Holy Spirit, which inspires us with the love of Christ, faith and obedience. Baptism in water is an act of humility and submission on our part. In baptism with water we acknowledge our sinfulness and ask to be purified, that our sins be washed away. Then in the state of purity we are prepared for baptism in the Spirit, for the Holy Spirit cannot enter something that is defiled. It is the Holy Spirit that fills and nourishes our souls, that drives us in our longing for the Word, for the Eucharist and for prayer. Jesus had a few home truths for Nicodemus, who had scuttled out to see him by night, presumably because he was wary of consequences. But what Jesus was to tell him was in fact a simple truth. If you do not believe what you see and hear with your own eyes here on earth, how can you expect to believe the things that happen in heaven? Nicodemus was an intelligent man, and yet he was struggling with the message of Jesus. Jesus made it quite clear that whilst he will reveal many things to us, he will not reveal everything, especially those things which have no direct bearing upon us. If something is revealed to us, then we should accept without question that it is absolutely true, and this has been revealed to us for a very specific purpose. Jesus went on to give us what is probably the greatest verse in the whole Bible, in verse 16. For this is the way that God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Together with verses 17 and 18, these verses sum up the whole of the Christian faith and the New Testament in particular. The power of the love of God and of Jesus to overcome death and sin on our behalf, that we may be saved from the damnation that our sin would otherwise bring to us. Jesus came not to judge, but to save all those who truly believe in him. We can all believe and be saved. Christianity is not some secret society. Anyone, Jew or Gentile, black or white, minister or servant, can believe, seek forgiveness and to join the family of Jesus. But let us just add a word of caution. We do not need only to believe, but to believe, truly believe in our hearts and want to proclaim the salvation that Jesus bought for us with his precious blood. But we are confronted by a small difficulty here. If God so loved the world, why did he allow the fall of man? However, you could argue that never was a kinder act in God's whole judgment than allowing the fall of man. For from what did he fall? The garden. And to what will he rise? A heaven. But how can a loving father permit so much pain and sin and misery amongst his creatures. There are two keys to unlocking this mystery. The first is Christ. This world of ours was made to be a platform for the manifestation of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will never correctly read the history of the earth until you adopt that as your first principle. This world was made to be a platform to show Christ. To that show of Christ in his redeeming work, pain, sin and misery were absolutely essential. And the second key is that of eternity. We do not yet know how that world would explain and remedy this. We do not yet know how the discipline of this world is bringing out the joy of another and how the rough and noisy quarry of Lebanon is giving effect to the temple which is now rising in its calmness upon the hill of Zion. When we behold all its balanced action and its perfect unity and its grand results, I am quite sure 
that we shall say of all of it, God is love. God does not give many things. He lends many, and what he lends he recalls. He lends everything that has not Christ in it, and therefore he recalls everything that has not Christ in it. But Christ and what has Christ in it he never recalls. A Christian affection, a Christian union, a Christian peace he never recalls. Christ fills it. God gave Christ, therefore that affection, that peace, that union is forever and ever. You will observe that the promise is twofold, one negative and the other positive. The negative we owe, strictly speaking, to the death of Christ. Our punishment having been passed on to Christ, it would not be just in God to punish us also, for that would be to punish the same sin twice. The positive, our admission into heaven, we owe to the meritorious righteousness of Christ, which is imputed to us. And when in that righteousness we have an actual claim, even the same claim that Jesus has, of admission into the heavenly kingdom, because we carry Christ's own claim, his righteousness is given to us. Let us pray. Grant, we beseech you, Almighty God, that like as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, has ascended into the heavens, so we may also in heart and mind ascend with him, and with him continually dwell, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen.